In this video, I'm going over Windows Games and Linux and everything you need to know about it. So starting off here, who is this video for? It's really for any Linux user that doesn't have a grasp on gaming in Linux or just a little bit of a hint of it. Um, for Linux veterans, a lot of this is probably going to make sense to you. But there's a lot of things just mainly want to break this down for a beginning user. So someone that's just coming into Linux and wants to play all their Windows games, or at least a large majority of them. So uh, there's four types of ways to play a, a game on Linux. First, there's like Steam or GOG, and you just launch the game and it works. Those are called native Steam games, and they're fantastic. If your game is in this category, it's as simple as hitting install and play. And then there's the second category, and this is Steam Proton. Steam Proton was just released this year. It has a pretty good chunk of games already on it. About 30% of my library is in Proton, which out of 200 games, that ain't bad. Um, and this is pretty much, again, hit install and play. But if you hit support Steam Proton for all titles, it shows your entire library. Does that mean you can just play those other games that weren't there before? Yes and no. You have to actually go to protondb.com and usually there's like some manual configuration that needs to be done. Your system has to fit a certain criteria for that to work, or you might have to change some configurations to make it work. And then the third way is Lutris. Lutris uh, is basically a website, is like this huge collaboration of everyone that's been gaming on Linux for years has put together scripts to install and configure uh, the game to work on Linux. Now, almost all of these projects that I've talked about as far as Lutris and Proton, is, they're based off of something called Wine. And Wine is a compatibility layer that allows uh, basically translation of those Windows-based stuff like uh, DirectX into something that um, Linux can read. So it's, it's really an important thing and uh, that's when you hear Wine, yes, you can actually install Wine directly, use it directly, but it's very, very unuser friendly for a new user. So I don't recommend that. That's why I was like, hey, stick to Lutris or stick to Steam because they're far more friendly and pretty much anyone can use those two products. So that's why I didn't mention Wine in this. Um, I know I might get some flack for that in the comments, but that's okay. This is more geared towards beginners, people that aren't... Um, huge Linux uh, buffs and know all of this stuff. And then the fourth and final way that you can install and play a game is something called virtualized, or basically you start up a Windows instance in a virtual machine and play it in that instance. So by doing this by default, it's not very good, it's laggy, and you just don't get very good performance. But there's something coming out that happened this year, or actually it was the end of last year. Level 1 Techs did, had the scoop on it and actually, I think, uh, contributed to this project called Looking Glass. And PCI Pass-Through, and I might get in the weeds a little bit here, but PCI Pass-Through is basically having a second graphics card that's dedicated to that virtual machine so it could power anything in a Windows environment. So just imagine having two computers one with one graphics card, one with the other. Well, instead of the two computers, you just have your one and you can have your Windows instance that will basically just play all your Windows games without having to do any of this other stuff. You just launch into Windows and you hit play. It's extremely hard to set that up and um, you have to manually switch your input. So I, I tinkered with the idea of doing a video about this, but it just... It would appeal to such a small percentage of the Linux population. One, you'd have to have two graphics cards, and two, uh, you'd have to be okay with switching inputs on, like, let's say you have a really nice monitor to that other one, or have a secondary monitor altogether to just play Linux or Windows games. Not a good solution, in my opinion. But that's when Looking Glass came in. Level 1 Tech has, it has done a lot of videos over this, but basically what that does is it takes away the need 
for having that second monitor. You could do just like a dummy or something to activate that card and then directly play your games on that virtualized instance and that way everything's in the same desktop. So some really, really cool stuff happened and that's the four ways you play a game in Linux. Um, and all of this has come out in just like literally the past year. So uh, I have this huge Windows background. I've been in Windows forever. I'm just really starting to take off in Linux. I've been on it for about 60 days now for the desktop environment. I, I've, always, I've had a lot of server work and I know terminal very well and a lot of those uh, command line uh, style commands, but actually using the desktop and being familiar with a lot of the products, I have no clue. So uh, that's why I'm learning as I go and I make a video every time I try and learn something new, especially if it's helpful for all Linux users or those that are coming to Linux as well. Because what this all does is it brings so many more people into Linux and it does so much for it. So that is the four ways and that's just the last year that most of these options came available. So when it comes to Steam Proton, that was this year. Looking Glass, that, that virtualized, real-time kind of feel to it um, that is also pretty much in this past year so amazing those are the four types of ways you play and now I want to get into kind of how it actually utilizes or those four types utilizes the environment around them so we already kind of talked about the basis but I kind of want to reverse to wine and talk a little bit more about wine wine itself is this compatibility layer that does all this but um, they use something called wine bottles. So when you create a game in Lutris, it creates this new wine bottle and it installs all of the things it needs, all the dependencies, such as Windows core fonts and all these other things. Depending on the game, it needs different dependencies. So how Lutris handles it is it creates a new bottle for every game. It's extremely, uh, it uses a lot of space or a good chunk of space. I mean, probably like a gig or two, depending on the game and the dependencies it needs, because it'll install, you know, visual C++ runtimes and things like that. So it's not the most efficient way of doing it, but it's the safest way because every game has its own container that it's in using these wine bottles. Just like you drink a wine bottle, well, just imagine a game is contained in that wine bottle or an application. So that's what Wine is as far as a compatibility layer. A lot of Linux vets might cringe a little bit here because what they do is they have one Wine bottle and they figure out what dependencies each game has and there's certain games that are parallel to one another, meaning they have the same amount of dependencies and they need the same dependencies. So technically those games could run in the same bottle. But if you're not really technically savvy and you don't keep up with which dependencies go with what, it's really difficult to use one wine bottle for multiple games. That's why Lutris and these other options I discussed in like the first step of this or first stage of this video, um, you need those different bottles set up because it doesn't know, or at least it hasn't doesn't have a lot of cross referencing there. So it is a little bit space intensive. So if you're going to do this um, and really make the transition and game a lot in Linux, I highly recommend a really big drive that you'll be using and putting all of these games on. And just know they will take up a little more space than if you ran them in Windows. So very important to know. And obviously, uh, when it comes to the virtualized portion of this, um, you can do shared storage and other things to, to cut down on it. But there's also you have to utilize a certain amount of space there to launch Windows in its full entirety, which is a huge space on. So uh, space can be a bit of a thing when you do gaming on Linux and you're doing all solid state, it's very important to keep that in mind because solid state space is precious. Me personally, I boot on, actually have a lot of solid states in my drive, but let's just say the average user boots on a solid state, but I highly recommend like a big data drive. So go grab like a, four or six terabyte drive um, if you have a ton of games and just use it for all your installs and just know that the install will be a little bit bigger because of how wine is structured and how we utilize these wine or wine bottles. So let's get to part three here. And this is basically what you need for your system. 
what graphics card is better what processor is better well this is an interesting thing because depending on when you watch this video the answer could be different if you watch it today january 2nd or 3rd it's going to be nvidia graphics probably because they have these proprietary drivers that are very very good but they're proprietary drivers you literally have to go out to nvidia download them and install them on your system and you know if you have a debian based system that's fine but a lot of times those drivers won't work on different linux distributions this is bad it's it's one a very closed source way of approaching things and there is like open source projects but they're very primitive they don't have near the performance of these proprietary drivers but as of today nvidia holds the crown but that's changing and it's changing rapidly sometime this past year which this year has been huge for linux gaming if you haven't figured it out already and why i'm literally on linux full time is because of how much it has changed amd announced hey we're no longer doing the closed source they had something called amd gpu pro and there were these proprietary drivers doing this the same as nvidia well about midway i think that passed this last year they said this sucks let's just go ahead and open it up let's just do all open source it's such a small market share who cares nvidia is already killing us there let's go ahead and just open it up it'll take such a headache off of us and they'll bake it all into the kernel well what this means to everyday users is well when you go to install linux in 2019 and you have a recent amd card it's just going to work and it's going to work damn good <laughs> and i mean that's exciting like i have a vega 64 myself because i kind of want to encourage this behavior this open source behavior that that amd is ex exhibiting and it's kind of amazing they even did this but that means in 2019 these vega cards these new cards heck their new cards are coming out they're all going to be open source and they're going to be baked into the kernel this means stuff's just going to work great so as an example in kernel 4.21 that's coming out early 2019 FreeSync's going to be there already i'm, I'm running 4.20 right now that just got released and i'm seeing awesome performance in my games like incredible performance and it's because of this open source initiative i don't have to sit there and install drivers for my amd card it's just there all i have to do is install certain dependencies for what's called DirectX or the Vulkan aspect of this. This is DXVK, and that's kind of another compatibility label. Much like Wine, it actually uh, is a compatibility label with DirectX 10 and 11. And I go into depth, I'll, I'll go ahead and put it up here, but you get those installed, and, and that video will have it, but it basically is dang near real time. I, I'm telling you, my performance is just as good as my windows box when i get these games working using dxvk that's amazing like a lot of my games i just don't have as much crap running in my background i don't have all that overhead of windows all that junk you know i've i've, I've gone through all the reasons why windows sucks i don't have to tell you otherwise you wouldn't be watching this video if you thought windows was just awesome um it's it's just awesome how, how great it has become like I literally can play most of my games that I love just like that. So um, there are some caveats I want to talk about. So you kind of know the type of system you want, whether it's AMD or Intel on the CPU side of thing doesn't really matter too much. Just more of the GPU. If you're really future proofing and you really are, are excited about this, I recommend you going and buying an AMD card. Heck, uh, an AMD 580RX right now is less than 200 bucks and it's a fantastic card. And if you really want to blow it out of the water and get it like a Vega 64, I think they're like 300 something now. And that's pretty much the high end card for a residential AMD user. But um, that's it for, for this portion of it. I mean, that's what you need. And that's kind of my rationale beside, you know, hey, get this AMD card. You already have a pretty decent system. If it's been built in the last five years, you're pretty much good and uh that's where linux is being developed on as far as baking all that in and making it easy for you the user to just take off 
without having to deal with all these drivers. Like in Windows, it has to go out and download the drivers and install it, and then it's constantly upgrading in the background. You know, you got your GeForce experience, oh, game ready driver, update, update, update. Oh, a new driver, new game came out, go update that. None of that crap, gone. That's the future. That's that's why when someone says, hey, Linux gaming's dead, it's, it's a dead non-starter. Gaming is taking off in Linux. Like, way taking off and nobody sees it I, it just drives me crazy because i'm like god you got so many aspects of it that's developed in this past year so where does this leave us where 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 are we going where it's it's just such a great time to be alive right now because as you've seen in many of my past videos i am fed up with windows i've literally been dealing with it for decades i've done it in my professional career for literally past 16 years or something it's it's right in that wheelhouse and it's so neat to see how far linux has come in this past year it's picking up steam that's why you're seeing these big corporations starting to make moves in the linux space because it is becoming a huge huge deal not that it wasn't already most people will say hey linux is everywhere well it's in server environments it's in uh, you know, your TV, it's in all these other things. You'll, you know, you get in on Brian Lundick's channel, he'll tell you it's in everything and it's everywhere. It's in your phone. It's in Android. It's, it's, it's everywhere. But Linux desktop is nowhere yet. That's changing. That's changing this year. In 2019, this is going to be a big year for Linux. And I've been a naysayer all this time. And I have literally turned that corner. In late 2018, I kind of figured it out. I was like, okay, I'm starting to see some traction. I'm starting to see some general people. I'm starting to see the grandmas of the world come around and, and some of them able to use Linux, where it's not just these neckbeards, these people that have always uh, championed Linux. Your average day users are starting to come around. And... That's why Linux is just going to have this crazy year. That's why Linux gaming is going to be huge this year. It's going to be game changing. Kind of funny pun there, game changing. Yeah. But you get the point. You get the point. Gaming Linux, it's happening. It's already happened, and it's only going to happen a lot more this year. You've seen my Steam library go from 10 out of 200 uh, over a hundred playable games almost out of the box and if I really try hard I haven't really found a game yet that just will not work in my Steam library so that's it for today's video but I wanted to touch on the subject because there's so many wrong just just blatant you know a lot of people don't understand where it is where it's going and how people use games. So this kind of is just for beginners out there. If you're watching this, just know, hey, it's going to get a hell of a lot easier for you in the next couple months. And by the end of 2019, it's going to be just a great time to be a Linux gamer.